founders, what's going on? You guys know I love in-person events and they are back. The recording you're about to hear is from our most recent event where we had hundreds of founders come together, share intimate details, templates, KPIs, OKRs about their business, and it was something special, something special. We'd love to meet you in person. If you wanna see the next live events we have coming up via our schedule, the link will be down below in the description. If you're listening on iTunes, check this out on I, uh, YouTube. You'll see the links in the description, or you can just Google Founder Path or Latka next event. We'd love to see you in person. In the meantime, though, enjoy this recording. It's a good one. So this valuation data, none of it is my own information. Um, it's all uh, taken. A lot of you guys have done this. Out of curiosity, stand up if you've done this, if you've been on the podcast before. So just stand up if you come on the show. Founder on the show. I'm just curious. One, three, four, five. Okay, cool. And then, and then uh, stay, stay, well, raise your hand if you'd ever come back on again. Oh, okay, cool. There we go. All right. So again, I'm not smart. I'm just curate. Like record the audio content, get the stories, and curate. And so you see when you look at the screen, I mean, Henry's on here somewhere, I think, too, um, bottom left there. But these are like early, early. Like that's Johnny at Hoppin in the upper left before he had any revenue. You obviously know what, what, where Johnny's at sort of today, obviously, in the press, maybe for the wrong reasons right now, but uh, Johnny at Hoppin. Same with Wade Zapier, the second up there on the left, right? But before he did a big secondary. So again, uh, and, and Sid is right after that uh, at GitLab before he IPO'd. So again, nothing I'm showing you right now is original content of my own. It's, it's all curation. And so we're gonna focus on three very quick things, right? 247 SaaS valuations anchored on these three critical topics. If you're only focused on increasing your valuation, what's the one metric you'd focus on, right? The second is, the fastest growing valued companies, what are they doing? So a couple tactics, and then IPO watch. Who do I think is gonna file in the next two quarters? All right, anyone have any predictions by the way? Just like on the count of three, name a company that's currently private SaaS company that you think might IPO in the next two quarters, All right? One, two, three. I didn't give you enough time to think about it. Okay, think about it. All right, one, two, three. Okay, god damn. Outreach. There I go, outreach. Just okay. works again. Stripe, yeah, Stripe, there's a bunch of them. We'll, go, we'll jump into a couple of them. All right. Again, data process, uh, founders come on the show, we record after the recording is done. And by the way, you guys give, thank you. You give us so much power to get these founders on because you listen every day. I've talked to a couple of you guys that have listened to hundreds of episodes. We've recorded almost 3,000. So you give me the power to get CEOs like Henry to come on because of the distribution channel. So I wanna say thank you for that. I really appreciate it. I do not take that for granted. So these downloads happen. Um, this is the show, if you're not listening yet, highly encourage you to listen to it on the way back. Get, get, uh, listen to these founders. It's the same style you've seen. It's like data, 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 hard-hitting data. Um, we then confirm all of the data given in the podcast with email follow-up, right? So that's what my schedule might look like during a podcast day. We'll just record a 20, 30 back-to-back. -back. And then after the recording, I send an email follow-up, right, with all the founders to confirm that the valuation data they told me live is accurate and just give them a chance to, to fix it. So we have more valuation data points on SaaS companies than PitchBook now at this point. And what we've done is we've put that all in an Excel file. And what I'm gonna do over the next 10 minutes is pull a bunch of these data points out of this Excel file. We'll talk about that USB drive here in a second. All right, first metric, what's your guys' guess? Just yell out some metrics. Um, there, there's obviously some obvious ones, but the question is this. The fastest growing on a valuation perspective, SaaS companies have the highest X. X is your prediction on metric, go ahead. Growth, revenue, growth rate. Say it again. NRR. NRR, net dollar retention. Any other guesses? Akil, what do you like to see in a company before you buy them? Growth, revenue growth. All right. Akil is one of the sharks after lunch, by the way. We're doing Shark Tank. You're going to see a founder come up, share their profit and loss, balance sheet, make an ask, three killers. Akil, he looks, look, he's, he looks nice. Killer. Killer over there. They're, we're gonna try and do a deal live. I don't know what's gonna happen. We'll see what happens. But anyways, uh, number one metric is this, and you guys can feel free to snap shots of this if you just if it's you can't write all this stuff down. Um, it's this. It's not revenue growth actually. So said differently, if a company's growing revenue very quickly, there's cases where the fastest the faster growing revenue company is valued less than the higher NDR one. So, so dollar retention is more important than revenue growth. Right now, this changes. Right now for valuations. And you can see the buckets at the bottom, right? So the three on the left that you see have lower retention. And you see what they trade at, right, based off their last round. That middle column 
is sort of the middle retention rates, right? Less than 130 net dollar retention. You see what they're trading at, right? Paddle, 40 million raise on 800 million at 20X. The way you get up on that 50, 60, 70X, again, if you're optimizing for valuation, big caveat. I like a bootstrap founder that was profitable. If you're optimizing for valuation and trying to keep your dilution low, you can see there that net dollar retention is key, right? So above 130%. And those are some companies in that category right now earning 40X multiples, right? So net dollar retention is the most important. Let's hear from a CEO that is in that first category, right? So weak, I would call it weak net dollar retention. This is Alex. Like, so we're going to finish a year, like we're going to finish this year at about, you know, anywhere from 70 to 73 million annual recurring revenue. Like we're growing very rapidly. Our net retention is solid. Right, our net retention kind of like a grow. Our net retention is hovering between one fifteen to one twenty percent. I want to increase good, it man. by like I want to increase it by about ten points even further and get it into like one twenty five to one thirty. So he he desperately wants to IPO this year, but that number is not good enough to IPO. Even at seventy one million bucks in AR, that's got to get up to like one forty one fifty to have a compelling pop like you see with Henry on day one. So that's Alex at Security Scorecard. Second one, uh, Amit at Gong, right? Listen to him talk about his customers and dollars. Yeah, so our uh, our NDR is almost always, like even these days, north of like 150%. And 115 one, 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 or 150? 150. One, we love COVID, by the way. You can, I'm, I'm in my pajamas still there. Uh, in a closet at a rental where I was sitting with five other entrepreneurs in LA. Rocking the boxers, interviewing a meet, another day at the office, you know. But 150% net dollar retention, right? And again, trading at you know a very high, uh, very high multiple of 40%. So the question, this is a question I just have everyone ask when you talk about driving up your net dollar retention. If you don't add any new customers over the past 12 months and you can only grow from upselling, that's the question. That's how you drive. That's how you think about NDR. No new customers. How do you grow? What can you sell for a million bucks per year, right? And really think about that. What would someone be willing to pay you for a million bucks per year? Okay, so key valuation takeaways are right there. I'm not going to repeat them. Um, you can check them out, right? But we talked about NDR, driving up NDR. And I will tell you some of the highest, this is a bit of a surprise, that right box on the right is a big surprise. I'll let you read it. I won't repeat it. And if you're not doing that, you should. And that is your CSM team should have an NDR quota, right? Give each CSM a book of business of about a million bucks of ARR. And if they don't grow it, that book by at least X percent per year, 10%, 20%, whatever, then they don't get a commission. If they hit it, they get a commission, just like a sales rep. So CSMs with NDR targets. Hack right there. All right, let's go into the second section here. Second section, the fastest growing SaaS companies, what are they doing? The first is the one there on the left. That's what we're doing here at FounderConf, by the way. That's what GitLatka is. That's what the book is. A media business is a moat. No one can steal it from you. They can't rip off your code. You can't steal community. That's what this is. That's why, you know, whether it's Andre in the front row or Akil flying in or some of you guys have come from India, 14-hour flights, you can't rip community away. So all those companies on the left have brilliant media businesses that give them CAC arbitrage. They can get customers for free. Huge moat, very valuable. And you're seeing these media businesses get bought up, right? Why did HubSpot buy the Hustle or Morning Brew? I forget which one, right? Morning Brew went with, with the other one. Yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a Hustle, right? Why did Stripe buy Indie Hackers? Right, and this happens across industries. So media is really critical. If you're trying to get into SaaS, that's where I would start. I'd build the media business first or the agency first and then jump into SaaS. The second is SaaS Plus. So just raise your hand if you charge or you make money on anything except recurring SaaS revenue. Any other, just raise your hand if you have multiple revenue lines and not pure SaaS. Yeah, this is a good thing, right? VCs would hit it if you do like professional services, but you know when you touch someone with professional services, they stick longer. This is a great thing. You should do that. There are other SaaS plus models, SaaS plus marketplace, SaaS plus IoT. When someone installs your IoT device and then you upsell software, they're never going to churn because you ship them a physical good that's sitting in their living room or whatever it is, right? So SaaS plus is what that means. And lastly is arbitrage, right? When Hoppin can go raise at a valuation multiple from VCs who have too much money at a 100x multiple and they can buy StreamYard for a 20x multiple, Right, so they pay for StreamYard 30 million bucks in revenue. They pay 250 million bucks, so a little under 10x, right? It's a little under 10x. They just increase their valuation by like, it's 90x arbitrage, because they can go sell that revenue to their VCs at 100x. 
That's that's financial arbitrage in private markets. This is obviously PE. You do this obviously in publicly traded SaaS companies looking at PE ratios and things like that. Zoom Info did this. I should have hit Henry on this. Zoom Info just did this with Chorus when they acquired Chorus. Right, so th those are sort of the keys there. Let's look from one of the best in the world at using a media business to drive instant payback with the crew from ClickFunnels. This is Russell and Todd. Do you guys measure payback period, like like time to recover cash? I, not really. Our all-in costs to acquire customers about $130 at this point. Uh, but like Russell said, we don't really even look at it that way because that that upfront media spend that last month was about 130. So that upfront media spend that was really paid back to us immediately through these front end one time products that are being sold. So we're acquiring the ClickFunnels customers, but really the upfront net is effectively zero. So guys, let's brainstorm real quick. What are things you can put at the top of your funnel that you can sell to recover your Facebook ad dollars or your LinkedIn ad dollars quickly? Right. Ebooks, magazine, books, magazines. Courses, educations, educational stuff, checklists, data right? files, data files, Excel files, mo templates, models. There's all kinds of stuff. Think about putting these things at your top of your funnel so you get that CAC payback instantly. Uh, that's what Russell and Todd have done. You guys know what they're doing in revenue? Just yell it out. Oh, some of you guys know. They're, I mean, they're like 160 million bucks now and we're bootstrapped. That's a million, ARR, right? Incredible story. Uh, second is Marketplace. Let's look at Byron here with Writer Access and understand how he is rapidly building a SaaS company because he built a marketplace first. We have some customers that are paying north of $100,000 a month, mm -hmm. you know, to have content created at scale. Um, we have customers paying $100 a month, you know, including their $39 a month fee. <laughs> That's right. He's got 40,000 companies that pay him to access his writers to write their blog content, he can very quickly upsell a SaaS product to both the 40,000 companies and the 7,000 writers on his platform. That's what, that's what SaaS plus marketplace is as a business model. And you're seeing those valuations pop. And actually, you're about to see, can't talk about it, but you're about to see big news from writer access. All right, and then lastly is Hopin. All right, I'll let Johnny speak to this. And then when was your first dollar of revenue? Um, so our first dollar of revenue, oh, there was a few stages in that, but probably, uh, mid 2019, but we were in private beta. We've been in private beta for a long, long time. We, we started the pipeline with a type form. Basically the type form got overrun and we couldn't track it. And then we decided to send it through to Clearbit to, to send, enrich the data. Right. So this was when they were still in effectively private beta. Obviously things have changed for Johnny since then. He's really though, in my opinion, um, he's bought his way to hundred million bucks in ARR, which there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a different strategy. Great sales guy and just doing acquisitions to buy his way up using that arbitrage. So that was part two. Part three is IPO watch. Uh, these are the three right, that I'm looking at, right? Vendasta, Highspot, and user zoom, right? This is Vendasta's revenue growth. Um, Brendan King, very interesting business model. Uh, he's talked about wanting to go public already. Um, they're already flush with cash. The first time really didn't do well for a variety of reasons, but I think he'll go for it again. He wants to do a roll-up strategy, um, and he'll need public dollars to do that cheaply. Here's him talking a little bit about how he uses value-added resellers to drive growth and why acquiring companies to allow the value-added resellers to sell is how he plans to grow fast. Are you past a million bucks a month? Do you think you'll pass that this year? Where are you at? No, I think we, we I told you before. So this year we're we're just we're about we just did two point three and change last month. Okay, great. Oh, I mean that's very healthy then. Good. Yeah. So two point three, and again, that's a mixture of kind of the pure play SaaS plus the marketplace stuff. That's right. Right. So he didn't talk about that. He leverages a value at a reseller marketplace that sells all of his products, and so all he has to do is buy a new product, teach them how to sell it, and he sits in the middle and makes money. Right. I would argue that value at a reseller is our distribution channel. Right, it's a real moat. That's Vendasta. Um, here's High Spot, Robert. Uh, I'll let him again speak to their IPO potential. And every time we've raised, we have a plan which allows us not to raise again. Um, and what, what raising lets us do is be a little bit more aggressive on those plans. So right now, again, with our last raise, we didn't ha we hadn't spent any money from the previous raise. Okay, which so, so that, just to be clear, that means you still have thirty five million bucks in the bank account. Plus more now, plus another 60. Yeah. yeah, well, now plus 60, which obviously a good position to be in. Yeah. Why take the dilution if you don't need the cash? Because for a couple of reasons. One is um, when you think about a company like ours, you know, you need to be conservative with that cash to make sure that you have the right burn and that if you need to, you can become 
profitable if that, that's, a, that's a necessary thing. And so if you have more cash, you can start to make decisions that are a little bit more aggressive, still pragmatic, but aggressive. So for example, we can open up multiple um, geographies simultaneously instead of doing them in a, in a, in a serial, serial way. Right, so pretty healthy valuation. North now have 65 million bucks in ARR. I think you see these guys probably file in Q3. We'll see what happens. I think it probably ends up being a nine, 10, probably maybe 11 uh, billion dollar pop on IPO day, but I got Henry's wrong. Maybe I get this one wrong too, but it'll, I think it'll, you'll see that S1 later this year. And then lastly is user zoom. I mean, talk about a hot space. How many people use some sort of tool to collect user feedback and understand what products to build, how they're going through your user journey? There's gotta be other people use, yeah, user testing, user zoom, there's a bunch of companies in this space. Um, Alfonso has gotten diluted like crazy, unfortunately. Uh, so he doesn't have as much upside to gain in the IPO, but here's him talking about that potential. Clearly uh, surpassing at the $80 million run rate because we grew, when, when we spoke to you, we were growing at almost like, I would say 45%, 40 to 45. We're now growing at 55. So it's not a hell of a lot more. It's not like we're doubling in growth, but we are growing more. Will you break uh, $100 also, million dollar run rate by December? So $8.3 million no, in revenue this December? Okay. No, I think we will buy, I think we will, well, I mean, run rate maybe, but I think we will be, actually, we will be over $100 million by Q1. So by the way, he's passing that right right now. That was recorded a couple months ago. He's passing that right now. What's impressed about this business is that first sentence of the subtext. There's very few companies that are able to say they've got X amount of companies and just that one customer is paying more than a million bucks. That's a sign that if they apply that same tactic to the rest of their base, they can drive NDR through the roof on a bunch of other contacts. So again, really healthy metric. I think the public markets will love Alfonso if he decides to file later this year. We will see what happens. But here's what you just learned in the past 25 minutes, right? We talked about the one metric, which was NDR, right? If you're focused on driving up valuation, get your NDR above 130%, be like gong, hop in and click up. Number two, we talked about some of the fastest growing companies, how they're hacking this by using SaaS plus business models, SaaS plus IoT, SaaS plus marketplace, SaaS plus professional services. The hottest one, SaaS plus percentage GMV right, or payments revenue, fintech revenue attached to SaaS. And lastly, we talked there about the IPO watch. That was a lot in a little amount of time. Was that a valuable slide? Yeah. All right, all right. And then last thing here, again, this is another one I would just take a screenshot of. You can take it home, send it to your team. This sort of breaks down the tactics behind those nine companies that I just showed. So um, going forward to the next slide, um, this USB drive right here, a lot of you guys have gotten Excel files before, but we've got about 20 of these bad boys left. And all we've done is we've exported all this valuation data onto this USB drive. So there's over 450 companies that have raised their revenue. So it's literally columns, the CEO's email, the revenue, the multiple, the valuation, and obviously you can back into how much they sold in those rounds, right? We sell this on the site for 997, right? We sell it on the site for 997. Um, I want you guys to get it for free because I want your help. We want to do a big photo shoot tomorrow with as many people wearing Founderpath shirts as possible. A lot of you guys have seen very uncomfortable button downs. These are way more comfortable. I'll sell the shit out of these. Custom ink, cotton, my nipples feel great. Okay, it's just unbelievable. Um, we'll give you this for free if you show up tomorrow in a Founderpath shirt. Right? So all you have to do is go back to our booth during lunch, grab it. Here's a hint at sort of like what it looks like on this file. But literally, you grab a shirt at lunch, take it with you, wear it tomorrow. We'll do a photo shoot here right before lunch tomorrow. And right at lunch, if you're wearing that shirt, we'll literally just hand out these drives so you can take it home with you. That way you don't have to pay. If you're an investor, it's double the price. Just kidding. Just kidding. All right, guys. So, so listen, enjoy yourselves. We have lunch now. And just remember, I'm going to just tease you here. This is the P&L of a company that's gonna try and sell or get a deal done live on stage right after lunch. Check out the PL, try and predict what you think they might trade at. We'll have three sharks making offers live. I'll see you guys in an hour and a half. Enjoy lunch.